Now we've had a brief overview over all of these. We'll take each one, one at a time. I already talked a little bit about Ultram, how when I first went into nursing, we gave these kind of like a Tylenol. I mean, we had to document that we gave it, just like with any medication, but it wasn't on in the narcotics cart. We didn't count it. That has changed now. Ultram is treated as a controlled substance. Stadol, like I said, is... Um, it's, I forgot that it's used to treat migraines, but mostly I, I've seen this used in um, labor and delivery. Codeine, like I said, is usually something that is added to cough syrup, but it's also in Tylenol. Tylenol with codeine supposedly works a little bit better for pain control, and there's several different, there's Tylenol with codeine number three, or sometimes it's just called Tylenol number three, and I think there's a Tylenol number four, which has a little bit more codeine in it. Demerol is one that um, I've given IM, intermuscular, a lot, although it can be given IV. It's usually used for um, when people are allergic to morphine a lot of times, and they can have Demerol when they can't have morphine. It's a synthetic. It used to be used quite a bit when I first went into nursing, but it's this where it says metabolites accumulate and cause seizures. It's It's got some pretty nasty side effects, and I'm seeing it used less and less. Morphine is probably the narcotic I've given the most of. It's probably because I worked on oncology, and this, is, this drug is used a lot on oncology and um, IV push kind of good to know the, the basic doses of morphine because like this Cadian down here says 80 milligrams um, that's a pretty large dose because it's extended release you wouldn't want to give 80 milligrams of something that was immediate release the typical dose of morphine IV is 5 milligrams it's, it usually comes in a 5 milligram vial and if you're giving less than that you have to waste it and you have to have a um, a witness for your waste. Real important with MS Cotton. Do you see the C O N T I N is kind of underlined with a squiggly line? Think of that as being the first half of the word continuous, and that will help you remember that Cotton stands for continuous release. You must not crush these because if someone's taking like that Cadian that you see down there, 80 milligram extended release, if they chew it up and swallow it, then that turns it into immediate release. So they're getting 80 milligrams of morphine in one hit and it will probably result in death. That's just too much. You can see next to that just morphine sulfate extended release is in a 15 milligram tablet. And that too you wouldn't want to crush or chew because then you you turn an extended release into an immediate release and they get way too much of a dose all at once. And so not only do we have to be careful about that, but we have to um, educate our patients on that too. Hydrocodone is something that we'll see a lot in long-term care. It's twice as strong as morphine, and so um, while the typical PO dose of morphine might be 15 milligrams, with hydrocodone, usually we're going to give 5 or occasionally 7.5. It does come in the 10 milligram strength also. And sometimes doctors will order, I think I've seen it in the 2.5, or if the doctor orders it in a 2.5 and we only have the 5 milligrams, then we cut it in half and give them the 2.5 dose. You have to also watch this. Um, sometimes the doctor will order 1 to 2. So we'll have to ask the patients, do you want one or two? And so that if they have Norco 10 milligrams and then it's supplied in a 5 milligram, then the orders might say one to two. Well, we need to be careful that we get it right, that it's saying they can have up to 10 milligrams, which equals one to two 5 milligram tablet and not be giving them two 10 milligram tablets. So it can be kind of tricky on the dosages. Also, the second number that you can see here 325 on all of them, or except for on the right hand, and then it has slash 500. That's telling you how much Tylenol is in them. Hydrocodone always comes with acetaminophen or Tylenol. And so the second number is telling you how much 
Tylenol is in them, and we have to keep track of that too. So especially if a lot of our nursing home patients are, they have an order for Tylenol every four to six hours as needed, and then they'll have an order for hydrocodone every four to six hours as needed. We can't give them Tylenol, maybe give them two 500 milligram Tylenol, and then two hours later they're still in pain, and so we say, oh, okay, we'll give you your Norco instead because then that's too much Tylenol. So you have to be really careful about that. And that's why a lot of times in my experience, if I anticipate that Tylenol might not cut the pain, I'm going to start with the, the Norco because I know if I give the Tylenol, then I won't be able to give the, the Norco for four hours or however long. So that might be the, I mean, we're told to start low and you can always give more, but in this case, that, not, that might not be so. You might want to start with the hydrocodone if you anticipate that the Tylenol might not be strong enough. Some other products we see, um, hydrocodone and oxycodone are, are pretty different. Um, oxycodone is often called Percocet, whereas hydrocodone is called Norco. Percocet is supposedly a little bit stronger. Here it says one and a half times stronger than hydrocodone. I, I'm surprised at that. It didn't seem that much stronger to me, but Depending on what comes after the PERC tells you what it's mixed with. So Percocet is mixed with Tylenol. Percodan is mixed with aspirin. And then just plain old oxycodone without anything is just called oxycodone, roxycodone, or um, oxycontin. And here, again, pay real close attention to the ending, oxycodone can be oxycontin and then it's controlled release whereas oxycodone in the roxycodone form is immediate release. One you can crush, one you can't. Dilaudid, I gave a lot of this also in um, on the cancer floor. This is, it says four to eight times stronger than morphine and two point times 2.5 times stronger than oxycodone. This is something that usually someone won't start out with. They won't have surgery and need pain medicine and get immediately put on Dilaudid. This is for people who have chronic pain, especially where I worked on, in oncology, who have built up so much tolerance that they need something this strong. Um, if you were to give a vial of this to someone who had never had morphine before, it would probably kill them. It would be too strong. So this is for people who have developed tolerance but still need some pain control. Fentanyl, when given IV or IM, is used for conscious sedation, like in, in pre-op. And I've never worked in surgery, so I've never given it that way. What, the way I've always given fentanyl is in this um, duragesic patch. It says it's 100 times stronger than morphine, but that doesn't mean that that's what the patient's getting. These patches stay on usually for, um, I forget how long, three days maybe, or... Anyway, they stay on a long time and they gradually release that it says 25 micrograms per hour is how much they're getting. And this is a good alternative when um, people will be put on this to maintain their pain control and then have something br for breakthrough pain like Percocet ordered in addition to it. Oh, let me go back to this. When we dispose of the fentanyl patch, so we have to take the old patch off and put the new one on, um, it's still considered a controlled substance. It still has some medication in it, so you have to do that just like you would wasting a narcotic. So you have to have a witness, and each facility will have their protocol for disposing of fentanyl patches. Um, one, one way that um, you can cut it up and flush it down the toilet, or you can, um, some people put them in the sharps container, although I've heard of uh, drug seekers really hurting, injuring themselves, trying to raid sharps containers, so some hospitals or some facilities don't like that practice. Methadone, it says used for severe pain only. I've only used this for um, narcotic withdrawal, and so I haven't given this medication very often, but um, for, this is for someone who's maybe having some pain, but has been abusing like heroin or something like that. They still need pain control. I mean, we're not monsters. We don't go and do surgery on someone and, and leave them 
in severe pain just because they have a drug problem we're still going to take care of their pain just like we would anyone else and that's why patients are usually pretty honest with nurses about their um, recreational drug use is because they trust us and they know that at least in that realm we're not going to be judgmental we just need to know if they're using heroin or something like that so that we can give them proper pain control and we don't have them waking up on the operating table which can happen if they have a real high tolerance so people who have used recreational drugs especially the opioids like heroin they're going to need more medication because they've already built up a tolerance and it's not our job to to judge or blame them and say oh you shouldn't have been using heroin it's our job to control their pain and do whatever it takes to to get their pain under control and they can drug, deal with their drug problem later but when they're our patient our goal is pain control not um, punishing them for their heroin use so off that soapbox Narcan can be used when um, someone accidentally gets too much and this happens more than what we'd like to think especially in med surge when we're giving stuff like morphine IV um, respirations drop and we're, we have an uh-oh moment and um, it's really not a huge deal because we have this medication available respirations get around eight and um, it's just a quick call the doctor doctor will order so much of Narcan and we do that and then we start we start over because we've eliminated their pain control they're gonna wake up and be pretty grumpy because um, they're hurting and and we just start over with a little bit lower of a dose just because we have to give Narcan once doesn't mean they don't get morphine for the rest of their hospital stay it just means we give a little bit lower dose the next time non-opioids these are things that you can go to Walgreens and buy or Walmart NSAIDs there's a lot of NSAIDs we'll talk more about those towards the end of the lecture these are for mild to moderate pain relief as you saw they're often combined with opioids to achieve what's called a co-analgesic effect especially Tylenol is added to or acetaminophen as it's called is added to a lot of opioids you can get pain control without the side effects or without as bad of side effects if you mix them some of the NSAIDs that are available are ibuprofen the brand names of these are usually Motrin or Advil acetylsalicylic acid that's a mouthful that's just the um, chemical name for aspirin often abbreviated ASA Naproxen is commonly known as Aleve and Ketorolac, Toradol, that's kind of an interesting medicine and um, that's one that you cannot go to Walgreens and buy you have to have a prescription for that and usually that's given more in the hospital I gave that IV I am a lot <laughs> in um, especially after any kind of urinary surgery kidney surgery that type of thing doctors love Toradol for the that type of pain NSAIDs they don't have the respiratory depression that you see in opioids but they do have plenty of side effects of their own mainly this gastric distress is one two three four bullet points down and GI bleeds you can give them with food and that will eliminate some of the gastric distress some are coated if they're coated don't crush them and they're usually a bright color like um, enteric coated aspirins bright orange also there's um, risk of bleeding associated with NSAIDs and so we wouldn't want to give them before surgery don't combine them with alcohol and for aspirin it was connected back when I was a child I think to um, rise syndrome when given to children that were having viral illnesses like flu or chicken pox and so because of that aspirin is pretty much a no-no for kids and it also has the autotoxicity and renal toxicity so um, they don't give aspirin to children anymore for those reasons I mean it it has the potential for being okay but um, it's, there's just too many things that can go awry alright I'm running low on time I'm gonna have to pause and I'll see you back and we're right in the middle of NSAIDs so we'll continue